Hi there, I'm Dr. Stephen Fallon. Welcome to this new Dental Excellence video. I believe this is Dental Excellence 18. I hope you enjoy these Dental Excellence videos. I've put quite a few together over the last uh, two years or so. Uh, they're designed to give you a specific tip about one aspect of clinical dentistry. Um, they're not really a full lecture or a full seminar, but they're a specific tip, so shorter little videos. And what I'm trying to do is use, um, use uh, clinical video filmed in my microscope. So for today, I want to give you a specific, uh, talk about a specific detail for porcelain veneer preparations. And again, I'm going to use some video filmed in my uh, Zeiss microscope. And speaking to different ceramists over the last few years, one thing that they pointed out to me that dentists sending cases into their labs for porcelain veneers are sometimes missing is rounding out the line angles or the transition points in the preparation. So having sharp edges on your preparation that will be internalized in the porcelain veneers can stress concentrate the internal aspects of the veneers and cause some premature failures of your porcelain veneer cases. So it's very simple to correct this. Basically, uh, the main area where this kind of uh, sharp edge is um, being found is on the transition from the incisal reduction and the facial reduction. So you've got the facial reduction, you have this incisal reduction. So in this example, it would be a lower veneer. And then you've got this sharp corner here, this sharp corner. So that sharp corner, we just need to round that out so that we don't stress concentrate the internal of the veneers. If it's an upper, you know, I'd have to flip my hands around, but you'd have the upper facial, the incisal reduction, again, that outside incisal facial corner is where we've got the sharp edges um, that are not apparently being rounded out quite enough for the ceramist's liking. So this is one specific tip. I'll show you how I do this in the clinical video. I'm also gonna show you a reduction guide that I use. Um, for lower veneers especially, you're really confining the veneer preparation within the, the uh, outside, you know, outside wall of the diagnostic wax up. You want that veneer preparation to give enough space there between the outside wall of the diagnostic wax up and the outside wall of the veneer preparation, which you'll see visually with this video. Um, you're confining the ceramist if you don't give enough space there because there just isn't room in the occlusion typically to build these thicker. So let's look at this clinical video. Um, we're gonna show you a putty that I use. I've shown this before that I vertically section. I vertically section this putty to see the sagittal view of the preparation again relative to the diagnostic wax up so the outside of the putty is the diagnostic wax up it's created on the diagnostic wax up model so here's the video so here's the putty in place on a lower cuspid and if you look here i have reduced the lower cuspid a little less than we would like in the incisal third body third of the preparation so it's a little less reduction than we would like i'm going to use this large ks diamond because i'm just trying to get a little bit more body third space for the porcelain veneer the outside wall of that putty again was the diagnostic wax up which represents where we want to go you know it's the end point of the uh, final porcelain veneer ideally created on the diagnostic wax up and here you can see I have reduced this adequately with that little bit of reduction with the large KS diamond now I've sectioned the putty again and we're looking at the um, lateral incisor again I have an area this is a common spot I have an area on the kind of incisal body third where I've under reduced slightly so we're going to go in and we're going to use that KS diamond again and just reduce this so we give the ceramist the correct space for the porcelain veneer. 
you know, these are conservative veneer preps, but I want to give them about half a millimeter of space at least, five to six tenths. Here now you can see this looks pretty good. We have the good amount of space, but what you're seeing here is that sharp edge. So we have a sharp corner between the incisal, incisal third reduction or incisal reduction and the body reduction at the incisal edge. So this sharp corner is what the ceramists are telling me they're seeing, and I'd like you just to smooth that out as kind of the final step in the preparation. So I like to use these enhanced, or sorry, these uh, soft flex discs. So I like to use these soft flex discs. They're good at smoothing um, the preparation, and then just if you look here, I'm just kind of rotating it around that incisal edge, facial incisal edge. And that just gives me the um, rounded contour that we're looking for. So you could use this product. You could use an enhanced cup or point. Those are the different uh, instruments that I use on the slow speed handpiece to kind of round that transition zone. So anything that you find will work. I like something in a slow speed handpiece, so I give it a nice smooth rounded contour, as opposed to trying to do that exactly with the diamond. Um, with the diamond, you might accidentally over reduce that area. Um, so I like to use Softflex XT discs. Um, another popular one for me is the enhanced cups and points. So if you look at this little screenshot, Here's the cuspid. I was too close here at the uh, uh, incisal body third area. So we just reduced with this large KS diamond. This is what we like to use for areas where we're close to the matrix and close to the surface of the proposed veneer. And then to round out this corner, if you look here, this corner is really sharp. This edge here, we round it out with the Softflex XT discs or enhanced cups and points. Now the putty I cut and section vertically with a 12B blade. I just like cutting it with this 12B blade. That works out quite nicely. Um, we use these Softflex XT discs. Any disc would work for this. I like these because of the flexibility of them. They're mylar backed. I also, as I said, like the enhanced cups. And if you look at that case that I just shared with you, here are the preparations, and if you look at kind of a, a side view, you can see how I've rounded this incisal corner nicely. It's not aggressively rounded, there's still volume of tooth here to support the veneer, but there's the right amount of uh, smoothness to this rounded corner. So nice rounded corners. Um, with veneer preps, especially lower veneer preps, I tend not to break the contacts unless I have to. Typically, I don't have to on many cases, so I leave them as conservative as possible. This is a good tip if you haven't watched any of my other dental excellence videos. I try to leave the preparation in a majority of enamel. If you leave the preparation in a majority of enamel, if you look at the um, retrospective studies on porcelain veneer success, long-term porcelain veneer success. They show that preparations bonded to a majority of enamel veneer preparations tend to have the longest uh, long-term success, as opposed to prepping the tooth aggressively and trying to bond your entire veneer to dentin. I don't think that's a good idea. First of all, you're decreasing the structural integrity of the tooth, and secondly, you're bonding entirely your veneer to dentin as opposed to enamel, which has documented better long-term bond strengths. And I'm talking, you know, 15 to 20 years. I have many cases in the 10 to 15 to 20 year range, and um, I believe that they're holding up really well because of this kind of preparation design. So if you look at this case, this is one of my favorite cases from the last few years. I've shown this on a couple of different uh, uh, seminars, but if you look here, we uh, changed the lower veneers to improve the guidance and the occlusion. And we also added some posterior implants, and um, this case is holding up exceptionally well. You can see the change in the cuspid. This was a dramatic change to improve the lateral guidance, 
and prevent the patient from having group function on that side, especially with the implants being placed. Here are the veneers again. These are feldspathic porcelain veneers, layered ceramics uh, made by my ceramist, Harold Heindel. I'll show you Harold's info in a sec. Here's the upper and lower um, smile view of this case. I think really nice case. I really like this smile design. Really like this smile design. Here's a close up view. And here's Harold's contact information. He's based out of Seattle, trained in Germany, uh, does beautiful layered feldspathic porcelain veneers, kind of layered on the refractory dye, and you get that beautiful uh, color coming from the inside out. And just to show you, uh, filming with my microscope, my assistants. Uh, made this little quick video, one of my assistants. So let me show you this. It's pretty cool. So this is uh, my 4K HD camera that I'm using now, attached to my Zeiss Pro Ergo microscope, and I'm working on the patient. So this is a different case than the one I just showed you, but uh, this is a case I'm, uh, I filmed that I'll share with my occlusion design members on a monthly webinar. So you can see it's, it's a really cool setup to be able to get really detailed clinical video, really detailed clinical video. And my commitment this year um, is to add each month more and more clinical video for my monthly occlusion design members webinars, because I think we learn through clinical video really nicely. Uh, this past month I had three different clinical videos, really detailed videos. I showed during the webinar and then the other cool thing we did was we actually posted the um, unedited versions of those videos on the site as well for people just to watch um, as opposed to the narrated version during the webinar. So it just gives you different views of what I'm doing and um, that is kind of my commitment this year, more and more and more video and some of these little clips I'll make into dental excellence videos as well. So here's Steve's wax up from the case that you saw. Um, as you can see, the incisal third, there wasn't a lot of room occlusally for us to um, change uh, the outline contour of the porcelain veneers if I didn't reduce adequately on those lower incisor veneers. And we did open his vertical dimension to improve the uh, overall occlusion but uh, and the overbite and overjet relationship, especially on that one side's cuspid, the right side's cuspid. But uh, we didn't open him a lot. It was just a small amount, less than a millimeter really. The diagnostic wax up though is critical. Having that diagnostic wax up correctly um, designed and then making the putties for the wax up and using those to guide the preparations, absolutely critical to getting the correct amount of reduction without over reducing. <laughs> uh, so what I've done is my latest uh, online seminar, Altering the Vertical Dimension Case Studies, when you log into the seminar, we actually give you a complimentary download of my newest version of the diagnostic wax up instructions. And it actually has as the picture, kind of reference picture, Steve's case, because it's one of my favorites. And it's a good reference picture for uh, your ceramist to see when you're sending in uh, your wax up instructions. So that's designed to be, uh, you'd click on it uh, during the online seminar, and it'll give you a download of this that you could print out and fill out and use for your own cases in your own practice. So. Here's the registration page to join my new Altering the Vertical Dimension Case Studies seminar. If you haven't seen this, I'm going to be promoting it only for a little bit longer, and then I'll move on to um, working on something else. So if you'd, like to, if you'd like to see this, I'd encourage you to sign up and watch this as soon as possible. It's basically failindentalseminars.com slash video 2017, and you just, click to register you'll pick the time that you would like to watch this online seminar usually there's a time once a day in a time in your time zone that would work for you and you can register and we'll um, send you a reminder 15 minutes before the seminar you would log in and after five minutes during the seminar 
the little pop-up will come up where you can download the diagnostic wax up instructions so this is i think an excellent seminar i've had great feedback from it if you're interested in this kind of dentistry and larger more complex comprehensive type of cases you'll like this seminar answering questions about vertical dimension some critical questions about vertical dimension and giving you a system i think that's very predictable to use in your practice so thanks for joining me for Dental Excellence 18. I hope you like the tip of rounding that line angle, as well as seeing uh, using those putties to uh, basically fine tune and perfect the preparation depth of your veneer cases without being overly aggressive. Try to save as much enamel as possible. It's one of the biggest tips that I can give you. To, to achieve long-term success with your veneer cases. So remember, you can do this kind of dentistry. I believe that beautiful dentistry with precise fit and occlusion and beautiful aesthetics is not just for the gurus. So thank you very much, and we'll connect soon, hopefully, on the online seminar. Take care. Bye.